You have your own supplement factory in your gut. Your microbiome makes vitamins. It literally will synthesize and literally will create through its own metabolism of different things, vitamins that you need. But in that same vein, your microbiome also needs other kinds of vitamins from the diet in order to do that other job. So there's a synergistic thing here where the microbiome and micronutrients come into play. And all we focus on is macronutrients, how many protein, fats, and carbs that we're consuming. And we forget that micronutrients play a role not only in our nourishment, but also in the proper nourishment of our gut biomes so that they can do their job. Micronutrients end up being essential cofactors for the overall microbial pathways, right? For microbes to do different things and ultimately communicate with our body so we have sort of that, just that signal going back and forth that we need. So I'm gonna list off a few of the vitamins that are really important that you may wanna even consider supplementing with or at the very least just getting through your diet. Vitamin B1 is a very important one, that is thiamine. And I mentioned that first because on my channel I talk about intermittent fasting a lot. And in, during an intermittent fasting regimen, you tend to lose levels of B1, highly water soluble, and you recruit a lot of thiamine for different reasons. Thiamine is B1. Okay, 52% of the microbes within our gut, of our gut biome, requires vitamin B1. 51% of the bacterial genomes within our gut rely on exogenous vitamin B1. That means they are relying on us eating vitamin B1. You're gonna get that from like poultry and things like that, some of the best sources, like turkey, chicken, stuff like that. But that's not where it really stops. You see, think about this for a second. If you are deficient in B1, then you're gonna have a good amount of bacteria that are not able to get what they need to survive. So they become outnumbered by bacteria that can thrive without vitamin B1. So you end up with gut dysbiosis relatively quick. Now that's concerning for me with people that fast a lot because you are gonna be much more deficient in vitamin B1, putting you at risk for, of course, that gut dysbiosis. We just have to pay attention to this. I don't think it's anything that we have to be overly concerned with, but we need to be cognizant when we are refeeding that we're getting that in, right? Well, let's break it down even more. The annals of the New York Academy of Sciences demonstrated that a lot of our bacteria in our gut actually create vitamin B1 as sort of a side effect. So that solves some of the issue. There's a little bit of like a perpetual device there where they kind of feed each other. But what happens is when it makes a lot of B1, it gets stored in the gut mucosal layer. And that's one thing, that's cool. But have you ever noticed that like I talk about in my videos, when you're fasting, your gut mucosal layer breaks down. Pure hypothesis here, but do you think that maybe the mucosal layer is starting to break down in an effort to also extract some of that vitamin B1 that some of those bacteria need? Anyway, so taking a vitamin B1 supplement may not be a bad idea, or at least just getting the food in. Then we have vitamin B3, which is niacin. That's critical for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide production, which is like the root of all like energy and life within our cells. We can't survive without it. it. The body can synthesize niacin pretty well, but we still do need some from the diet in some degree. What this does is it helps regulatory systems within the gut, makes it so that things don't go haywire. We don't get too much inflammation or too much of one bacteria. So it's a pretty powerful regulatory system, but it's still getting discovered a lot. Then we have vitamin B5, pentothenic acid. Now, this one again, also getting discovered a lot because we haven't seen any kind of spontaneous deficiency occur. Like people don't randomly become deficient in vitamin B5. Sometimes you'll see it in like irritable bowel situations like where maybe they're just not absorbing nutrients, you know, and things are just going right through them or they're not able to eat certain foods because it disrupts their gut. But generally in a healthy person, you don't see it. But it just so happens to be one of the most important things for the overall metabolism of our gut microbiome. See, the coenzyme A that they create with this vitamin V5 creates the environment for them to actually have metabolism and actually grow. So this is super important. Now, what does that mean for you? Unfortunately, not a whole lot. You could take a vitamin B5 supplement, but there's a very slim chance that you're actually deficient in it. Now the big one though, vitamin B12, which I really think you should be trying to get as much as you can, because this is one that we actually do become deficient in, especially if you're plant-based, or especially if you're fasting a lot. 37% of the microbes within our gut can produce vitamin B12. That's great, but that's not a huge, huge number. Whereas 86% of the microbes in our gut encode within their genome at least one spot for vitamin B12. So they have at least one spot where vitamin B12 is needed in 86% of our, the genes in our gut. So we need vitamin B12 for most of our gut to survive. And that same study of the annals of the New York Academy of Sciences found that folate, vitamin B9, along with vitamin B12, 
are regulators of sort of the communication between the gut microbiome in our gut, of course, and the host. So if we wanna kinda of get that synergistic communication going where there's feedback loops and recognition of different things, where the gut can recognize when our brain is you know, depressed or vice versa, we may wanna be paying attention to this. And again, it comes down to that diversity. Having a diverse microbiome is going to allow us to create more of these vitamins and synthesize more of these so that we have fuel for other microbes. Let's say bacteria A creates some vitamin B12, okay, side effect of it, okay, then maybe bacteria B needs to thrive on B12. So you see, there's a synergistic relationship within that ecosystem too, but if you don't have the diversity there, then you might potentially lack that because we get a lot of our micronutrients from our gut microbiome. If you're looking at diversifying your microbiome, one of the things that I would recommend you do is of course get fiber in, get your soluble fiber in, get your long chain inulin through things like artichoke and chia flax, you name it, but also take a good probiotic. And the one that I typically recommend is called Seed. It's down below in the description. You can use code THOMAS15 and save 15% off on it as well. Seed is a supporter of this channel, but I also help them out with research and I help them out in a lot of different categories, but they are doing a lot in the way of different research with probiotics as well as just the microbiome in general. So I highly recommend you check them out. They are a prebiotic and a probiotic in one. So very unique blend there. So anyway, link down below after you're done with this video. This next one is vitamin A. Now the interesting thing is the gut microbiome might very well regulate how we utilize vitamin A. And that's interesting because vitamin A is something that we can have too much of. It's fat soluble, some cases we do consume too much, and toxicity from vitamin A is a real thing. The microbiome seems to regulate it a little bit. It has to do with the microbiome and also the gut mucosal layer. You see, it's a secondary effect, right? The short chain fatty acids that are produced by a diverse microbiome, like butyrate, are what support the mucosal layer, which supports the protection of the vitamin A from getting into the bloodstream if it doesn't need to. The vitamin A ends up being needed for the cells that are within our gut that proliferate rapidly. Okay, so the combination of diverse bacteria, short chain fatty acids, vitamin A, are what allow us to rebuild our intestinal wall, like that, what we're looking for. So again, taken in the context of like intermittent fasting, when your gut mucosal layer naturally breaks down, Obviously, having diverse bacteria is important to rebuild that with the vitamin A and, of course, the butyrate. Then there's iron, and this is fascinating because I've always said this, that excess iron is not necessarily a good thing. I don't think that we need to be consuming more iron. I don't think we have an anemia issue. I think a lot of our issues are we have too much iron in its bound state and not in its unbound state where it's usable. And what ends up happening there is we consume too much iron and iron, just like if you were to leave an iron dumbbell outside is going to oxidize, it's going to oxidize in the gut and that can affect bad things. That can affect the bacteria. It can kill off bacteria, but it can also allow bad or pathogenic bacteria to thrive on it because some bacteria, particularly pathogenic ones, like to feed on that kind of oxidation and they grow and proliferate and it becomes a big problem. Additionally, when we have high levels of iron in the gut, we see lower levels of butyrate, so less short chain fatty acids. Why? Indirectly, probably because the gut isn't able to produce them as well because it's not functioning because it's in a very oxidized environment. Then you have the other side of the equation. You should be supplementing with things like magnesium, okay? Because magnesium has a counter effect. Magnesium can increase the bacterial stress resistance. Now it does this in humans, in the host, via that NMDA pathway, the bacteria, there's a couple different mechanisms in how it does it, but basically it allows the bacteria to deal with stressful situations more, making the good bacteria have a better chance of potentially surviving. Candidly, the list goes on and on with different vitamins that the bacteria can potentially produce and get acted upon, but I don't wanna make this video 90 minutes of talking about different vitamins. The bottom line is, the more diverse your microbiome is, the better chance you have of synthesizing your own vitamins. Not saying you can go on without eating, but you could be able to get by with a little bit more of a deficiency knowing that you're at least taking care of your gut in balance. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.